Hi guys, Gannis here, aka Rookie, and welcome to my Friday video. Way! So, we'll start off with the first obvious thing is the beard. I had an accident while shaving um, when I went down to Wakefield, basically. I um, got along my basically my clippers, basically came off, so I left it like a streak in my face. I did tweet a picture out, and I was so, so gutted that happened. Um, it was really, really, really annoying because I basically lost part of my beard um, but then I went to upload a festival which was great it was a great Saturday I've been uh, probably one of the best best festival I've been to the lineup was awesome like I said not that every band was to my taste but every band was good um, the problem with it though was obviously there was no food in the festival because it's just a, um, a warehouse well it's called Warehouse 23 so basically just a music menu no food which was a bit disappointing but I managed to go and get um, a subway between acts and that, so that was okay. But that's basically what I ate during the day, which wasn't a good thing because then the next day I felt really reverse. But I recovered and we, I got on with things. Um, at the end of that, that I had to get like a taxi. Basically, I didn't need to get a taxi. I could have walked back, walk, walked into town to get a, a taxi. But I was told by the security is that town is full of twats, is the word he said. We we're just looking for a fight. He said, we'll order you a taxi. So they ordered a taxi, a taxi came, I got in, took me to a hotel. Great, it cost like three pounds, which was an amazing ride. You know, considering how far it was. And if I'd been in Glasgow, that would be like a fiver, you know? So we, so I was expecting at least that or not more, but so it was like three quid, which was great. So it was, it was, a, it was a good taxi drive. Um, now, how am I going to put this? Um, hold on, I forgot to turn that off. off. Um, Ella Blackberry released a new single, and I kind of like it, I don't know, well I do know what it is, the chorus is really catchy, really well written, really good sound, the video itself, the music of the band, the lyrics for the verses aren't the best, I'll be honest with you, but as an overall song it's really good, really catchy, I would say it's like, it's like Avril Lavigne meets Busted, it's the best, best way to describe it, um, I don't know if that's what she was going for, but I really like the video, and it kind of makes me question my music taste. I mean, I, I like all sorts of stuff, good stuff and bad stuff. I mean, I mean, for God's sake, one of my favourite bands in the entire, entire world is Alicia's Attic, you know, which are basically a pop band. But you know, what they call they call they were called an alternative pop band, whatever that bloody means. But yeah, so you know, you should know, But I really like that song, and I think I'm going to have to go and listen to a lot more of her stuff and see if there's anything else good. Especially there's a new EP coming out soon, so I'm probably going to have a listen to that when that comes out. And if it's any good, I might even buy it. I might even review it as well. But um, yeah, so yeah, that was, that was good. Um, um, jump back, keep jumping back and forth, back and forth. But when I was in Wakefield, the breakfast I had in the hotel, basically serving bubble and squeak. And I thought, oh great, I love bubble squeak. But I've come to the conclusion that the bubble squeak I make, which is the one I do, isn't bubble and squeak. Because my bubble squeak is basically has a grieve in it, which makes it all oh, really good. I have done it with eggs in the past as well, um, but yeah. So it's too dry, basically, as far as, I, as far as I'm concerned. It's nice, but it's just way too dry. So when I make it with grieve, obviously, it's really liquidy and it's really good. It goes on really well, especially when you hang over. Um, so that that was good. Um, I then I pro obviously mentioned last week I had a problem with my car. Well, I found out the problem with my car was. Um, basically, on the drive back up from Wakefield, basically, I lost the heat shield over my uh, catalytic converter. Basically, it came off my car mid motorway. Now, I pulled up the next service to see what had come off, and eventually, that's what it was. So, I tentatively drove back up very slowly, um, got home fine. They rung up a garage then on the Monday, because Sunday everything was closed. Um, they said, yeah, I could bring it in the morning. I brought it in the morning. Uh, basically, the initial thought was that they were just gonna. I was gonna drive onto the fork. They're gonna lift it up and have a look underneath. But instead, I left the car with them. They wanted me back about lunchtime, saying, "Yep, yeah, it's yeah, it's the heat shield. We've replaced it. That's thirty-five quid." I was like, "Well, okay." And when I actually got there, they only charged me thirty. So they're a really good garage. I'm probably gonna take my car there for any more repairs they ever needs, and even probably for the MOT, you know. Um, so that that was. That was a bit of a nervous drive back. It's got to be, it's got to be said that because I didn't really want to take that drive. Um, and then, obviously, you know, was it being an adult like I am? So then we actually been living back in the flat. I've got this really nasty habit again, which is basically when I wash my clothes, 
was that I put them on the bed to fold later instead of folding them from the waist through the way. So, like an idiot adult, I've probably got this puzzle there now. Basically, all I end up doing is that this is how you tell you're a single person you live alone is that all you do, all you clean, wash it after you have to wash it, it's on your bed, which pushed over to one side, so you sleep on one side and your washing sleeps on the other. And I've got a sword that I really do, you know, it's a, it's a sign that you're single and you live by yourself. So I've really got to get up, get up, have to do that. Um, uh, yeah, something that uh, happens a lot. I mean, those of you who know that I write for or corner, um, I get a lot of bands asking me via personal messages on Facebook or Twitter asking if we do the album or we do some uh, interview the band. And nine times out of ten, I said, sure, I'll give them the press contact, our press press contact email, email us there, and we'll sort something out. Unfortunately, there are so many people out there that do this, and it's kind of inexperienced, I suppose, you know, because they may, maybe not been in a band before, don't know how to do it, but they send you information, and it's not really information at all. I mean, it's not, you know, it's worse than a short description on your Facebook band, band page, you know. You've got, you've got to tell us stuff, you've got to tell us about it. I mean, okay, was it, you know, you've been a band since, when, when did you form, you know, was it how long, you know. Otherwise, these are the questions you're asking. Your interview's going to sound very generic because you don't give us any information, you know. Because when I do interviews, you know, I research, you know. I spend at least three to four hours in every band, even as a band I know really well, I spend three to four hours at least researching that band and coming up with questions so the interview is not a generic so where did you get your name from uh, was it um, how do you guys meet etc uh, etc et sometimes I'll ask those questions because there isn't because maybe they're not got an EP release coming out at that time or anything like that but no it, it's uh, sometimes I mean there's one particular this week where I've been basically giving them advice on who they need to contact at other magazines you know how, and, and basically, and, and tips on writing a bio was that they can put on a press release, because there's nothing worse than a band sending you something but they don't have a press pack as such. Now, a press pack isn't something that's big. You know, it can be as simple as a PDF document that just just has one or two photos of your band, which can be used as press photos, um, a link then to say either your YouTube or SoundCloud, a description of your band, like I said, which can be. The name of the band members was it um, when you formed as a band? You know, was it uh, what type of music you play? And um, you know, was it um, what gigs you've played? You know, if you supported anyone big, whether you support someone small, depending on obviously the type of band you are, you know, and how big you are at that at that time. You know, when your EP release is coming out, or what your, your last time your EP release was. You know, and then if you've had any good comments from press contacts, maybe do a little. Quotation mark of that, you know, and talk about how the future is going to be. It's very, very low. I'm talking maybe even just a paragraph. I mean, some band, some bands with professional PRs, they have a lot. They have a big huge spiel talking about, you know, how the band form about each member and about was it their PR set, their you know, their sound system set, or their bass amps and all that stuff. That stuff I don't need as a press person, but a lot of them have that as part of the press release because that's what you would send to a venue that they may be trying to book. Because uh, they were all in one, that's all a complete package. Um, you know, so that does that. Um, but so many of the basics that a lot of people don't have, you know, they, they say, Oh, yeah, I'd like, like to do an interview with you. And you go, Great. So you say, say, you say, Okay, I'll send you some interview questions. That are, yeah, oh, great, great, great. So you send it over to them. And then you don't hear anything back. You know, was it, you know, there, there are so many times I've sent out. I'm just trying to think, say this month for instance now, I've had 10 emails I've not had replies to when bands have basically been Facebook messaging me, Facebook messaging me, Facebook messaging me, or Twitter messaging me, and I've said, yeah sure, no problem, we'll do an interview with you, and I've sent them an interview question, some of them custom interviews, some of them just what the ADZ challenge that we have, and 10 of those bands roughly haven't come back to me, and it's been like over a month, you know. So they were begging, begging me for something. So I sent them that, and they just then not answered them. Just you know, and it's it's one of the worst things. I mean, when you send someone an invite to your face to your Facebook band page, yeah, right? The first thing I look at, right, is I go to the page info and I look to the about, and I try to see the short description of the band and the long description if the short short description interests me. And a couple of things to look at is what type of music it is, and then you know. And then listen, and if there's a list of influences or 
you know, style, you know, if you show the description, hi, yeah, we formed in 2014, blah, 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 I go, okay, yeah, they're a good band, or that we, we formed this year in 2016, blah, 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 okay, there's some interest there. And then I could go like, there's nothing worse than to be invited to a band page when there's none of that information, was it, there's no, no links to any of their other social media, no links to any of their music, and it's just a couple of photos and everything like that. I mean, yes, okay, you may be a small band, but there's no point in inviting people to your Facebook page until you have something for them to look at. And if you've got no information there, okay, I've had a rant now, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to my actual week. Um, I accidentally made a mistake because um, my computer set on auto update. It accidentally auto updated to Windows 10, and I'm kind of liking it so far. I'm missing some of the features of Windows 8, but there's a lot of features that used to be Windows 7 that are now in it, which I like a lot better than the Windows 8. And for that reason, I'm actually kind of liking Windows 10. Um, it's upset a lot of my drivers. I've had to go through everything and update things, graphics, sound, you name it. I've had to go through it, but I've got them all sorted. It basically took me most of this week sorting out, but it's all sorted out, thank God. Thank God. Um, um, yeah, there's one more thing I want to talk about, I'll end on a bit of a weird note. <laughs> um, now, how to put this? Oh yeah, okay. No. You know when you fancy someone, you know, right? And it, you know, I'm a normal person, everyone, you end up, you, you run into someone, you meet someone, oh yeah, I kind of fancy them. Right? I seem to be at the moment fancying lesbians. I don't know what it is. It seems to be a really bad trait of mine at the moment. Um, I seem to be falling for them. Like I'll, I'll, say, I'll say, oh yeah, she's really nice. And then, not stalking, but sort of stalking, because that's what you do in the modern age. You, know, you find them on Facebook or Twitter, and it's in their Twitter description, or it's, in, or it's on their Facebook page that they're interested in women, or they're even going out with another one, or even married to another woman. Um, so you're like, oh for fuck's sake! So yeah, I can, I kind of keep, it keeps happening to me quite often. I don't know what it is, why I find this so attractive. Nothing's ever gonna happen. I'm never gonna approach them and tell them that sort of thing because one, they're not gonna be interested because they're lesbian. Two, because it's just an infatuation that you get over it. And three, because it'll be a waste of waste of everyone's time if they did. So yeah, I love the lesbians. So yeah. Anyway. <laughs> On that weird note, um, I hope you guys have an amazing week. I have. I'm going to go off and see when we were wolves now. So, um, as always, have fun. <laughs>